Hello, here we are. We're going to get going with Leviticus 21. This is going to be more ordinances um, supporting the Ten Commandments or above, uh, beyond the Ten Commandments, um, teaching the Israelites how to become the people of God, the people that he wants them to become, a holy people unto himself. So here we go. Leviticus 21. The Lord said to Moses, speak to the priests, the sons of Aaron, and say to them, a priest must not make himself ceremonially unclean for any of his people who die, except for a close relative, such as his mother or father, his son or daughter or his brother or an unmarried sister who is dependent on him since she has no husband. For her, he may make himself unclean. He must not make himself unclean for people related to him by marriage and so defile himself. Now, I'm going to think that this is talking about touching or being involved with a dead body. Okay, let's go on. Priests must not shave their heads or shave off the edges of their beards or cut their bodies. Because remember, the, we're going to see that the priests of Baal, B-A-A-L, uh, would cut themselves in worship of that God. They must be holy to their God and must not profane the name of their God because they present the food offerings to the Lord. The food of their God, they are to be holy. They must not marry women defiled by prostitution or divorced from their husbands because priests are holy to their God. Regard them as holy because they offer up the food for your God. Consider them holy because I, the Lord, am holy, I who make you holy. If a priest's daughter defiles herself by becoming a prostitute, she disgraces her father. She must be burned in the fire. Now, that's a very severe punishment, I think you'll agree. The high priest, so God's not fooling around. He's getting a holy people for himself no matter what. Okay, the high priest, the one among his brothers who's had the anointing oil poured on his head and who's been ordained to wear the priestly garments, must not let his hair become unkempt or tear his clothes. He must not enter a place where there is a dead body. He must not make himself unclean, even for his father or mother, nor leave the sanctuary of his God or desecrate it. Because he's been dedicated by the anointing oil of his God. I am the Lord. Now that was to the high priest. Okay, the one among his brothers who has had the anointing oil poured on his head and who has been ordained to wear the priestly garments on and on and so forth. So he cannot, even for his mother and father, he cannot be defiled by the dead. Okay. The woman he marries must be a virgin. So he's got a higher task than many of the others, okay, because he is the high priest. And I'm assuming this is the son of Aaron that will be taking Aaron's place, okay, when Aaron passes on. The woman he marries must be a virgin. This is to the high priest again. He must not marry a widow, a divorced woman, or a woman defiled by prostitution, but only a virgin from his own people so that he will not defile his offspring among his people. I am the Lord who makes him holy. I am the Lord who makes him holy. The Lord said to Moses, Say to Aaron, For the generations to come, none of your descendants who has a defect may come near to offer the food of his God. No man who has any defect may come near. No man who's blind or lame, disfigured or deformed. No man with a crippled foot or hand or who is a hunchback or a dwarf or who has any eye defect or who has festering or running sores or damaged testicles. No descendant of Aaron, the priest, who has any defect is to come near to present the food offerings to the Lord. He has a defect. He must not come near to offer the food of his God. He may eat the most holy food of his God as well as the holy food, yet because of his defect, he must not go near the curtain 
or approach the altar. And so desecrate my sanctuary. I am the Lord who makes them holy. So Moses told this to Aaron and his sons and to all the Israelites. Okay, now does this does this mean that the Lord doesn't love people who are lame or have defects? Does this mean he's rejected them out of hand? Of course not, okay? It just means when it comes to the sanctuary and being near the Ark of the Covenant that's holding the law, everything has to be perfect, okay? All right. Remember, it also says that sacrifices can't be a deformed animal or an animal with a defect, okay? Leviticus 22. The Lord said to Moses, again, uh, tell Aaron, I, I added the word again, tell Aaron and his sons to treat with respect the sacred offerings the Israelites consecrate to me so they will not profane my holy name. I am the Lord. Say to them for the generations to come, if any of your descendants is ceremonially unclean and yet comes near the sacred offerings that the Israelites consecrate to the Lord, that person must be cut off from my presence. I am the Lord. If a descendant of Aaron has a defiling skin disease or a bodily discharge, he, must, he may not eat the sacred offerings until he's cleansed. He'll also be unclean if he touches something defiled by a corpse or by anyone who has an emission of semen, or if he touches any crawling thing that makes him unclean, or any person who makes him unclean, whatever the uncleanness may be. The one who touches any such thing will be unclean till evening. He must not eat any of the sacred offerings unless he's bathed himself with water. When the sun goes down, he'll be clean, and after that he may eat the sacred offerings, for they are his food. He must not eat anything found dead or torn by wild animals, and so become unclean through it. I am the Lord. The priests are to perform my service in such a way that they don't become guilty and die for treating it with contempt. So no acting casual about these ceremonies and sacrifices. I am the Lord who makes them holy. No one outside a priest's family may eat the sacred offering, nor may the guest of a priest or it's his hired worker eat it. But if a priest buys a slave with money or if slaves are born in his household, they may eat his food. If a priest's daughter marries anyone other than a priest, she may not eat of any of the sacred contributions. But if a priest's daughter becomes a widow or is divorced yet has no children and she returns to live in her father's household as in her youth, she, she may eat her father's food. No unauthorized person, however, may eat it. So what's for the priests and, his, and their families is for them. Anyone who eats a sacred offering by mistake must make restitution to the priest for the offering and add a fifth of the value to it. The priests must not desecrate uh, the sacred offerings the Israelites present to the Lord. This is that piece of hair that I want to get. I don't know where it is. Okay. By, uh, the priests must not desecrate the sacred offerings the Israelites present to the Lord by allowing them to eat the sacred offerings and so bring upon them guilt requiring payment. I'm the Lord who makes them holy. The Lord said to Moses, speak to Aaron and his sons and to all the Israelites and say to them, if any of you, whether an Israelite or a foreigner residing in Israel, presents a gift for a burnt offering to the Lord, either to fulfill a vow or as a free will offering. You must present a male without defect from the cattle, sheep, or goats in order that it may be accepted on your behalf. Don't bring anything with a defect because it won't be accepted on your behalf. When anyone brings from the herd or flock a fellowship offering to the Lord to fulfill a special vow or as a free will offering, it must be without defect or blemish to be acceptable. Okay, that's being hammered into their heads, okay? Do not offer to the Lord the blind, the injured, or the maimed, or anything with warts or festering or running sores. Don't place any of these on the altar as a food offering presented to the Lord because the priests are going to eat it, right? They're going to eat a portion of it. You may, however, present as a free will offering an ox or a sheep that is deformed or stunted, but it will not be accepted in fulfillment of a vow. 
You must not offer to the Lord an animal whose testicles are bruised, crushed, torn, or cut. You must not do this in your own land, and you must not accept such animals from the hand of a foreigner and offer them as the food of your God. They, won't be, they will not be accepted on your behalf because they're deformed and have defects. The Lord said to Moses, when a calf, a lamb, or a goat is born, it's to remain with its mother for seven days. From the eighth day on, it will be acceptable as a food offering presented to the Lord. Do not slaughter a cow or a sheep and its young on the same day. When you sacrifice a thank offering to the Lord, sacrifice it in such a way that it will be accepted on your behalf. It must be eaten that same day. Leave none of it till morning. I am the Lord. Keep my commands and follow them. I am the Lord. Do not profane my holy name, for I must be acknowledged as holy by the Israelites. I am the Lord who made you holy and who brought you out of Egypt to be your God. I am the Lord. Leviticus 23. The Lord said to Moses, speak to the Israelites and say to them, these are my appointed festivals, the appointed festivals of the Lord, which you're to proclaim as sacred assemblies. There are six days when you may work, but the seventh day is a day of Sabbath rest, a day of sacred assembly. You're not to do any work wherever you live. It's a Sabbath to the Lord. These are the Lord's appointed festivals, the sacred assemblies you're to proclaim at the appointed times. The Lord's Passover begins at twilight, evening, on the 14th day of the first month. On the 15th day of that month, the Lord's festival of unleavened bread begins. For seven days, you must eat bread made without yeast. On the first day, hold a sacred assembly and do no regular work. For seven days, present a food offering to the Lord, and on the seventh day, hold a sacred assembly and do no regular work. The Lord said to Moses, speak to the Israelites and say to them, when you enter the land I'm going to give you and you reap its harvest, bring to the priest a sheaf of the first grain you harvest. He's to wave the sheaf before the Lord so it will be accepted on your behalf. The priest is to wave it on the Sabbath excuse me, on the day after the Sabbath. On the day you wave the sheaf, you must sacrifice as a burnt offering to the Lord, a lamb, a year old without defect, together with its grain offering of two tenths of an ephah of the finest flour mixed with olive oil, a food offering presented to the Lord, a pleasing aroma, and its drink offering of a quarter of a hin of wine. You must not eat any bread or roasted or new grain until the very day you bring this offering to your God. This is to be a lasting ordinance for the generations to come wherever you live. From the day after the Sabbath, the day you brought the sheaf for the wave of the wave offering, count off seven full weeks, count off 50 days up to the day after the seventh Sabbath and then present an offering of new grain to the Lord. From wherever you live, bring two loaves made of two-tenths of an ephah of the finest flour baked with yeast as a wave offering of first fruits to the Lord. Present with this bread seven male lambs, each a year old and without defect, one young bull and two rams. They will be a burnt offering to the Lord, together with their grain offerings and drink offerings, a food offering, an aroma pleasing to the Lord. Then sacrifice one male goat for a sin offering and two lambs, each a year old, for a fellowship offering. The priest is to wave the two lambs before the Lord as a wave offering, together with the bread of the first fruits. They are a sacred offering to the Lord for the priest. On that same day, you're to proclaim a sacred assembly and do no regular work. This is to be a lasting ordinance for the generations to come wherever you live. When you reap the harvest of your land, don't reap to the very edges of your field or gather the gleanings of your harvest. Leave them for the poor and for the foreigner residing among you. I'm the Lord your God. The Lord said to Moses, say to the Israelites, on the first day of the seventh month, you are to have a day of Sabbath rest, 
a sacred assembly commemorated with trumpet blasts, do no regular work, but present a food offering to the Lord. The Lord said to Moses, the 10th day of this seventh month is the day of atonement. Hold a sacred assembly and deny yourselves and present a food offering to the Lord. Do not do any work on that day because it's the day of atonement when atonement is made for you before the Lord your God. Those who don't deny themselves on that day must be cut off from their people. I'll destroy from among their people anyone who does any work on that day. You shall do no work at all. This is to be a lasting ordinance for the generations to come wherever you live. It's a day of Sabbath rest for you and you must deny yourselves. From the evening of the ninth day of the month until the following evening, you are to observe your Sabbath. The Lord said to Moses, say to the Israelites, on the 15th day of the seventh month, the Lord's festival of tabernacles begins and it lasts for seven days. The first day is a sacred assembly. Do no regular work. For seven days, present food offerings to the Lord. And on the eighth day, hold a sacred assembly and present a food offering to the Lord. It's the closing special assembly. Do no regular work. These are the Lord's appointed festivals, which you're to proclaim as sacred assemblies for bringing food offerings to the Lord. The burnt offerings and grain offerings, sacrifices and drink offerings required for each day. These offerings are in addition to those for the Lord's Sabbath and in addition to your gifts and whatever you vowed and all the free will offerings you give to the Lord. So beginning with the 15th day of the seventh month, after you've gathered the crops of the land, celebrate the festival to the Lord for seven days. The first day is a day of Sabbath rest, and the eighth day also is a day of Sabbath rest. On the first day, you're to take branches from luxuriant trees, from palms, willows, and other leafy trees, and rejoice before the Lord your God for seven days. Celebrate this as a festival to the Lord for seven days each year. This is to be a lasting ordinance for the generations to come. Celebrate it in the seventh month. Live in temporary shelters for seven days. All native-born Israelites are to live in such shelters so your descendants will know that I had the Israelites live in temporary shelters when I brought them out of Egypt. I'm the Lord your God. So Moses announced to the Israelites the appointed festivals of the Lord. I love the, the, uh, the what's it called, the Festival of Tabernacles because they get to make little shelters and sort of like everybody's having a big group camp out. I don't know, I just love that one. It sounds like fun. All right, last one for tonight. Excuse me, uh, Leviticus 24. The Lord said to Moses, command the Israelites to bring you clear oil of pressed olives for the light so that the lamps may be kept burning continually. Outside the curtain that shields the Ark of the Covenant Law in the Tent of Meeting, Aaron is to tend the lamps before the Lord from evening till morning continually. This is to be a lasting ordinance for the generations to come. The lamps on the pure gold lampstand before the Lord must be tended continually. Take the finest flour and bake 12 loaves of bread using two tenths of an ephah for each loaf. Arrange them in two stacks, six in each stack, on the table of pure gold before the Lord. By each stack, put some pure incense as a memorial portion to represent the bread and to be a food offering presented to the Lord. This bread is to be set out before the Lord regularly, Sabbath after Sabbath, on behalf of the Israelites as a lasting covenant. It belongs to Aaron and his sons who are to eat it in the sanctuary area because it's the most holy part of their perpetual share of the food offerings presented to the Lord. Now the son of an Israelite mother and an Egyptian father went out among the Israelites and a fight broke out in the camp between him and an Israelite. The son of the Israelite woman blasphemed the name, capital N, so that's the Lord, with a curse. So they brought him to Moses. His mother's name was Shalometh, the daughter of Debri the Danite, so of the tribe of Dan. They put him in custody until the will of the Lord should be made clear to them. 
Then the Lord said to Moses, take the blasphemer outside the camp. All those who heard him are to lay their hands on his head and the entire assembly is to stone him. Say to the Israelites, anyone who curses their God will be held responsible. Anyone who blasphemes the name of the Lord is to be put to death. The entire assembly must stone them, whether foreigner or native born. When they blaspheme the name, capital N, they are to be put to death. Anyone who takes the life of a human being is to be put to death. Anyone who takes the life of someone's animal must make restitution life for life. Anyone who injures their neighbor is to be injured in the same manner. Fracture for fracture, eye for eye, tooth for tooth. The one who's inflicted the injury must suffer the same injury. Whoever kills an animal must make restitution, but whoever kills a human being is to be put to death. You are to have the same law for the foreigner and the native born. I am the Lord your God. Then Moses spoke to the Israelites and they took the blasphemer outside the camp and stoned him. The Israelites did as the Lord commanded Moses. That's very harsh. Thank God we have Jesus because Jesus said, yeah, it's one thing to be obedient to the law and do these things, but I'm telling you, don't even let it germinate in your heart. Let's talk about where this stuff originates so that you don't become that blasphemer that by Jewish law would be stoned to death. Okay, let's avoid that altogether, Jesus said, basically. Let's cleanse your heart. And, you know, stop trying to do these laws, but you have a dirty heart while you're doing them. That's called a hypocrite. Okay, you can obey any law you want, but if your heart isn't right, you're a hypocrite. Okay, I love you very much, and I'll see you tomorrow. We'll finish up this book, and we will go into, I believe, let's see, Genesis, Exodus. It's going to be Numbers. Let's look up what it is. Um, book after... Leviticus. I think it's uh, Deuteronomy, but let's just look. Oh no, it's Numbers. Okay, so tomorrow we'll finish Leviticus, we'll do Numbers, and then we'll finish up the Torah with Deuteronomy, and then we'll move on. I love you very much. Keep praying, okay? And I'll see you tomorrow. Good night.